Good morning and welcome to the KDPG Sunday edition. I'm John Delano. Stacy Smith and Ken Rice are away this week. President Donald Trump is receiving praise from both labor and management in much of the steel industry for his decision to impose tariffs of 25% on steel imports and 10% on aluminum that is manufactured outside of this country and exported to America. There were some concerns that wide-ranging tariffs, including steel and aluminum products from neighboring countries, Canada and Mexico, could spark a trade war from retaliation from two of our closest allies. But for now, they've been exempted from these tariffs, with the president hoping for a better NAFTA trade deal with them. So are the tariffs and what are some call a protectionist American trade policy good or bad idea? Well, last week, PNC chief economist Gus Fauché, CMU's Dr. Seven Yeltkin, and the University of Pittsburgh's Jay Sutkitz shared their thoughts about this issue on this program. This week, we welcome a man who is all too familiar with the impact of imported goods that compete in America with our own steel and aluminum products. Leo Girard is international president of the United Steelworkers, a diversified union whose members include 1.2 million current and retired employees. David Tribman, executive editor of the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, joins us for this morning's discussion. Leo, welcome to the show. Always Thank you. good, good to, to see be you here. and to be with you. Let's see if I could go a little primer on the trade deficit so okay. folks are on the same page. We have in 2017 a trade deficit of $566 billion. What does that mean? That means that we import goods and services into the United States in excess of what we send overseas uh, by the tune of 566 billion. The, you know, normally that would be fine if it was free trade everywhere, if everyone was dealing by the same rules. But as we know, different countries impose different rules and restrictions on American products. And one of the biggest offenders is China with a trade deficit, most of, or more than half of that trade deficit is with China, $375 billion. And I was looking at the statistics on China. We sell to China $130 billion worth of American products. They sell 506 billion Chinese products in the U.S. Hardly equal, hardly free and fair, and a source of the real problem. So when President Trump announced that he was imposing a tariff on foreign steel coming into America. What was your immediate reaction, Leo? Well, let me just say that uh, from the point of view of the United Steelworkers, we've been fighting for fair trade for more than 30 years. My predecessor, Lynn Williams, started at March for Jobs. And uh, at that point in time, we were, uh, and still up till today, we're not looking for special treatment. We're looking for a level playing field. And there isn't a leaven playing field. And China has been the, the worst violator, the worst, worst culprit. If you take our accumulated trade deficit with China since they entered the WTO and have never played by the rules, it's almost $7 trillion. Wow. My view of that is that the deficits actually turn out to be wealth transfers because you're buying more than you're sending, so therefore you owe them money. You owe right. them something. And so we've been fighting for this for, like I said, almost 30 years. We think that the president moved in the right direction. But maybe the most important thing is that Wilbur Ross, as the Secretary of Commerce, in the study they did, they basically came to the conclusion that if the next 20 years were like the last 20 years for steel and aluminum, it would affect national security. And so we have to do something now. Right. We've lost from, in the aluminum sector, we went from 15 smelters about 10 years ago to four that are running and one that's idle. In steel, uh, we've been decimated. We used to produce 135 million tons of steel. Now we do about 85 million tons. China used to do 500 million tons. Now they do 1.25 billion with a B. And so their, their, their business is they want to put us out of business. That's their role. That's what they're believing they can do. We can talk about that with aluminum. We can talk about that with steel. We can talk about it with tire. We can talk about it with cement. We can talk about paper. We talk about a glass. In every one of those sectors, they produce more than they can consume, and they dump it mostly on us, but anywhere in the world. But isn't it also true that China doesn't really uh, export much steel to the U.S.? Well, what, Ch what China does, they export enough steel to de determine what the price is. And, and they, they have the steel that they try to do circumvention. I'll give you one of the really nasty uh, examples. 
and one I have to try to keep my temper about. U.S. Steel invested a hundred million dollars in modernizing their rail, their uh, oil country tubular mill in Lorain, Ohio, where we had a thousand members. South Korea built a brand new oil country tubular mill, and they don't drill one inch. They don't drill in their own country, hmm. but they build that mill. They get their steel dumped from China. And they don't care, the South Koreans don't care that it's dumped in at a lower price because it goes into their tube mill and their tube mill destroys our market here by circumvention. So when you see the number that says this is what China does, to quote Joe Biden, that's malarkey, they circumvent in every way possible. You know who are the largest exporters? So just, just to be clear, so what you're saying is that what China does with all this excess steel that they make. 600 million tons. They make a ton of it that they can't use and, right. they, and in order to dump it or get rid of it, they sell it to other countries who then export, export it to the US to under their name? Is that That's right, that's right. And, and the, the largest percentage increase in exports from a country to the United States was nowhere, Costa Rica. Costa Rica? Costa Rica steel exports to the US were up 7,000%. Does Costa Rica make any steel? That's Chinese steel trying to make its way through Costa Rica into our market. Right. Right. So we have to fight on every front and we've been doing it and I think the president moved in the right direction but more important is what Wilbur Ross did. Okay. Leo, you were born in Ontario, you're a Canadian, you looked at this, I talked to you the day of this and you were concerned about the role of Canada. Many of your members are in Canada. Yeah. What's your perspective now? Look at uh, the day that it came out uh, was uh, one where there was a lot of concern and uh, so we'd started to do some additional research. And what we found is, well, hello and behold, we didn't realize it, America exports more steel to Canada than Canada exports to the US. So in effect, not only on steel, but on some other products, the US has a surplus. trade surplus with Canada. And, and look at, regardless of what the president said about Canada, he can't do anything. Because there's an agreement between NATO and NORAD in America, that Canadian minerals, metals, will be a integrated uh, integrated product with regards to the American Defense Alliance with Canada. But in addition to that, there's a trade surplus, and I think that uh, I, I want to be careful how I say this, but I think the president's being educated, and he's come to realize that uh, it's it's just in, not not accurate what he'd been saying and, and the mistake he made out in the west coast of saying that Canada had a deficit when he didn't know what he was talking about that's been all over TV right. that uh, he now knows that he was wrong. But the context here is NAFTA as well. Yeah. Isn't it? Talk about your views on NAFTA. Well, yeah. the, uh, the North American free trade agreement yeah. between the United States, Mexico and Canada. Uh, I, I can say this on behalf of the uh, labor movement not just the steelworkers the six major industrial unions and uh, the president of the AFL-CIO met privately with uh, uh, President Trump along with the U.S. Trade Ambassador and the Secretary of Commerce uh, to have a discussion about NAFTA and what we've told him is if this is a real NAFTA improvement one that actually protects and encourages workers to have a better standard of living in all three countries we're going to support it but if it's a uh, NAFTA that is just like the last one that has really uh, made life difficult for workers in all three countries, we're going to oppose it, and it's up to them. So I know that uh, Secretary Lighthizer, I know that he has an objective of trying to get a trade deal that can be bipartisan and accepted, and uh, we're willing to work with him. We meet with him whenever he wants. We have discussions about what we think should be in it, and if it happens, we'll support it. If it doesn't, we'll oppose it. Let me ask you about what this means for jobs. I want to sort of bring it back to mm -hmm. folks in the Pittsburgh area, in this region. Um, you know, there, I, I know that, if I recollect correctly, U.S. Steel says that they're going to is it reopen Granite City, yes. which is not in the immediate Pittsburgh area. Right. Um, but, Leo, as you look around, do you think this will have a direct impact, the president's actions, on jobs right here in western Pennsylvania? I think that we have to make sure that the administration has the tools it needs to enforce the actions the president wants to take. Right now it's very difficult because the Commerce Department and the U.S. Trade uh, Office, ITC, the International Trade Commission, they don't have enough staff. Right. And, and the Chinese in particular really figure this out. We'll file a very valid complaint on something at the International Trade Commission 
on some kind of product where China is cheating. They'll immediately file some frivolous project and at the International Trade Commission they have to decide how can they defend all two, to use an example. That might happen 50 times. So the president has to figure out how to, and the administration have to figure out how to put enough money in the pot so that we can enforce what he's agreed to. And if he does that, then it's going to turn into jobs. Just since the announcement, we've had about 3,000 jobs where people have gone back in aluminum and on steel. And if we can do something about this oil country tubular goods in the pipe business, uh, that will be more jobs again. Well, most of these enforcement actions, as you mentioned, take months. 18, to months, 18 months is considered quick. 18 months. I mean, that's ridiculous. And uh, this particular action by the president imposing a tariff, uh, so-called Section 232, yeah. I presume that is pretty quick. It's almost instantaneous. Uh, because he has the unilateral right to take action in order to protect American inter international security. And so that was one of the things that I said about Wilbur Ross was very smart, figured out where the operation was, looked at the last 20 years to the next 20 years and said, yeah, this will affect our national security. I'll give you an example, if I can, about uh, the, putting in a trade case in the International Trade Commission. It won't be steel or aluminum. We put in a very, very valid case on tires under section 421 it's called. They were found guilty, the Chinese were. They had a three-year penalty. In the first six months after the penalty expired, they put 50.1 million tires into the American market in six months. Destroyed our pricing business for our tire manufacturers in America. They couldn't earn the cost of capital for a long time. Yeah. And so those kind of things by China, I mean, I'm a, bit out, I'm a bit out on the far end of this because my view is you violate the rules three times, you don't get them back in the market. Yeah. <laughs> and I haven't been able well, to convince many of that, but, you know, three strikes and you're yeah, out. Right. It makes perfect sense to some of us, I'll tell yeah. you. We're going to take a quick break, Leo. When we come back, I want to ask you, though, about those who say this is going to lead to a trade war. Get your view of that. And then let's talk a little politics Sounds because good. you've been right in the middle of a lot of politics lately. We'll be right back.